Hey, what's up guys? I'm your host, Dark Atomic, and this is King of the Hill. Okay, we are here in game number one between Crazy Alien and Kier Picatendo. I'm not sure who is the defender and who's the challenger here. I think Crazy Alien should be the defender, but I'm not exactly sure. First map is Ice Flow, and you see Crazy Alien starting off with a 2-0 cannon, soon to be a 3-0 cannon, and Kier Picatendo mainly going for tag shooters. Uh, so quite a difference uh, in the strategy here. Um, Crazy Aliens 3-0 cannon will have trouble defeating the pinks, while Kier Picatendo as well. Kier Picatendo's tag shooter will have trouble defeating the pinks as well. Crazy Aliens records this series. He also already um, he already cut the towers out, so I really can't see what towers he's using. Um, so usually I usually I get the video and it's the whole screen is recorded and after that I or someone else cut the towers out but this time I already can't see the towers which is which is kind of interesting uh, if I commentate it I feel like round 4 is coming up both players should send pings cuz both yeah there we go crazy aliens pings against Kier Picatendo his boat helps a little bit, but he still leaks a bit. This is actually quite an expensive defense. He has this 3 0 attack shooter, this cannon, and this boat. That's not. That's quite a lot of money. That's a lot more than Crazy Alien's uh, 3 0 cannon. Which Pierre Picatendo isn't really testing out, which is a mistake, uh, if you ask me. Oh, there goes the pinks. I feel like Crazy Alien, if he really sends constant pings, so if Kipriga Tango does it, uh, he will probably get something else up, or maybe he does not and is greedy. Because 3-0 cannon is honestly not the best thing on this map. It's okay, uh, but especially if it whiffs, then a lot of pings can leak. So there are the last balloons from round 5. Round 6 is coming up, here goes the black popping power, the, what is it, um, zero one one boat, yeah, zero one boat by Crazy Alien. And basically the same by Kier Picatendo. Um, Kier Picatendo's name, uh, just by the way, I think it is, someone posted it in the comments in the last video, I think it's Kirby, Pikachu and the Tendo stands for Nintendo. So, Kirby Nintendo, obviously a big Nintendo fan. <laughs> uh, pretty funny name, if you ask me. Crazy Aliens one, uh, one uh, zero one boat probably won't be enough for round eight, I guess, because uh, if Kirby Nintendo does some some layering stuff with um, with regrow blacks and then some yellows underneath. Oh, and Kier Picatendo really needs to get his Ring of Fire up, otherwise he's screwed against the yellows. And there goes his Ring of Fire. He keeps his boat though, not sure if that's necessary. And now he's completely set until round 10 or 11 or something like that. On the other hand, Kier Picatendo going for the layering rush and doing a little bit of damage to Crazy Alien, but not too big of a deal. Round 10, round 10 is coming up. Round 10 is a dangerous round, especially for Crazy Alien, because regrow lads can be so deadly to this strategy. Many people use boats and cannons on, on Ice Floor. I personally don't like it because of regrow lads. You can leak, you can die to them. Uh, if you over eco just a little bit. I used to go ice on this map, like I started with ice shredding and then around 8 I sold everything for Ring of Fire, but sadly enough that's not possible anymore because Ninja Kiwi decided, uh, for some reason I don't completely understand, decided to uh, make low quality suck and make low quality not enable you to fill that much towers anymore. Crazy Alien selling his boat. Will Kier Picatendo explore that fast enough? No, there it goes. Crazy Alien's Ring of Fire. Any side sending a Rainbow Rush. Run 13. 
Ah, Crazy Alien going for a little regrow Rainbow Rush, just a fakey, and to be safe, Kirpikatendo gets his 3 0 cannon up. This 3 0 cannon is actually quite a bit away from the track, so uh, it might whiff a little bit. Okay, round 15, Ceramics Keeper Kirpikatendo is spamming boats while Crazy Aliens is spamming tag shooters. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. Um, Reaper Ceramics. Yeah, Kirby Katendo tests Crazy Aliens out. Oh, he might leak. Nope. 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 Crazy Aliens is fine. Yeah, Reaper Ceramics. There was an update by Ninja Kiwi. And with this upgrade, Insta Regrow was fixed. So I think that uh, that now Ceramics regrow every, every ceramic layer. So every ceramic layer has 10 parts. And every of the 10 parts of the ceramic layer will regrow individually. So if you pop a ceramic down to a rainbow, it will basically never get a, a whole ceramic again because, well, it would need to regrow 10 times for that, which is just not gonna happen. And that makes a, a huge difference for regrow ceramic rushes. Regrow ceramic rush. They are a lot weaker now than they were before. Um, but of course, Insta Regrow annoyed all of us, so pretty good update by Ninja Kiwi there. There were also some visual fixes, but no big deal. Okay, round 18 is coming up. Crazy Aliens goes for his maulers on the uh, on this little island where most people place their maulers. Here, Picatendo is selling a lot of stuff and seems to go for a rush. Oh, there goes the Regrow Ceram Group Regrow Ceramic Rush by Ninja Kiwi. Uh, by Kirpik Nintendo, sorry. Can Crazy Aliens get a Maelstrom? Oh, he doesn't even need to. Crazy Aliens says close? Well, it was actually not that close. I'm surprised that absolutely did nothing, but now Kirpik Nintendo is in a lot of trouble. Crazy Aliens should send a Moab now, because even if he gets this takedown ability up, uh, he won't be fast enough to counter a, um, a combo rush with some rigorous ceramics underneath. But it seems like Crazy Alien is waiting for round 20. Uh, wow, Kira Picatendo is, uh, is in so much trouble in this game. I think there's basically no win he can no way he can win this game unless he goes for a really quick fast cooldown Moab rush. Which is what he's gonna do, I think. It's kinda obvious that he's doing it if he sells the more uh, the mortars like a minute before round 20 starts, but will this rush do anything? Oh, that's a lot of regress ceramics, but Crazy Aliens get this Maelstrom and he should be able to defeat that easily. Yes, he doesn't even, wouldn't even have net to, needed to activate that. All right, I guess Kyo Picatendo will probably lose this game. Round 21 will both player remember moving their mortars. I guess they do. Crazy Alien even got uh, two motors. Oh, and Kier Picatendo might just die to that. 79, 70... I don't think he survives. I'll just die now. Not yet, not yet. Never surrender, never give up. I like that. Round 22, Crazy Alien can basically just, just wait him out. Um, even though like every rush he can do now uh, will probably work. He can sell his mortar for a fast cooler ceramic rush or a fast cooler Moab rush. Um, yes, Kirpikatendo maybe goes for another rush. Ah, there goes one more by Crazy Alien and Kirpikatendo selling everything for Regrow Rats. I guess that's a, another way of saying surrender. Okay, he stalls his Moabs and oh my god, Crazy Alien is losing to the to the natural ceramics from the mob. Oh my god. Oh my god, he did it again. He did it again, he lost to the natural to the natural balloons, to the natural Moabs. Oh my god, I can't believe Crazy Alien won that game, GG. And lost that game, GG. Oh my god, he had that in the bag. I That's so so unlucky for him. He should have really He should have really finished this game up and uh, killed Kier Picatendo earlier. Uh, that's kind of an unnecessary loss for him but crazy alien loses this game picks the map, next map and see you in the next game we're here in game number two between crazy alien and Kier picker tendo 
Crazy Alien lost on Ice Flow, so he picks the next map, which is Cards. Cards looks like Kier Picatendo and Crazy Aliens are both going farms. Cards is like uh, the only old school map that is left. The only map where you can still go boomer, boomer cannon, farm and mortar. Uh, on the most maps you go Ring of Fire these days, but on cards you basically have no good Ring of Fire spot. Cards is for for tax. Cards is a really terrible map. But um, sadly enough, it's the only map where you can basically still go for the strategy. Maybe on Yin Yang, I like to do it on Yin Yang still, but um, most players go Ring of Fire there as well. Yeah, maybe the Ring of Fire is a bit too strong. Um, it's really good for the early game. You can get it quite early, and then you're set for a really long time. But it wouldn't be that strong if Blade Maelstrom wouldn't be that strong, because uh, if Blade Maelstrom uh, wouldn't like insta-kill any balloon, then you would lack general popping power if you go Ring of Fire, but as it is right now, all little cute pink rush by Crazy Alien there, but Kyrpa Katana does not get his 2-3 uh, boomer up, which is definitely a good thing to do. Usually on um, on round four, it doesn't matter too much if you get that boomer or not. It's well, in the best case, you can get your uh, your farm one income boost earlier. But what kind of misclick does he mean? I don't know. In the best case, you can get your farm one income boost earlier. But I mean, forcing your opponent to get his Get it is just not worth it because you have to send blues, uh, some groups, and then you have to layer some pinks. And yes, it hurts your eco more than it does uh, hurt the eco of your opponent. So I usually just let my opponent keep his 1 3 boomer and be happy with it. <laughs> On round 6, though, uh, most play both players should send reds. Ah, there goes Killback Attendance 2 3 boomer because. You have to get your 2 3 boomer by then. Both players are even in farms, um, one and a half farms. Kirpikatendo about to build his second farm. Uh, that's okay for cards. Usually, if you go have two farms for round six, you're pretty good on cards. Um, you get with if you go boomer cannon, you get less farms in the very early rounds, but. Um, after round 8 you can go for a bit more farms than if you go tech cannon. Usually you should always... Um, the standard amount of farms for round 13 is 4 farms, so 4 two zero farms. For me 2 zero farms are whole farms and 1 zero farms are half farms. Round 8 is coming up, Crazy Alien has nothing so far to deal with yellows. And Kirpikatendo is going for regrow whites and I think that's yeah, that's regrow yellows. Crazy Alan going for that cannon, but that's only a tiny rush, so it won't do any damage whatsoever. But it forced Crazy Alien to get his cannon up, so I guess that's fine. Kirpikatendo on the other hand completely safe with his Glaive Ricochet. But both players don't have that. Okay, Crazy Alien's fine, but Keeping Attendant does not have that many farms. He will have trouble to get uh, the four farms before round 13. Because um, usually you can be quite greedy before round 13, but not too greedy. Uh, so you shouldn't build like a farm in round, eight, round 11. That's, that's just not gonna work. But he's going for another farm, for another 0-0 zero, zero, or 1-0. Zero. Oh well, he keeps it 0-0. Zero, zero. I think he can upgrade it to 1-0 zero, zero, because, well, 0-0, zero, 1-0 zero, zero doesn't make too much of a difference. Round 12 is coming up. Both players have their mortars. Um, Kid Picatendo's spot is a bit weird, I think, because it's very far in the back. I like Crazy Alien spot a bit better because you always have to keep in mind as long as the camo balloons are not de decamerized your towers can't, can't attack them so you have 
less time to attack them if you place your mortar uh, in the back. So you always want your mortar in the front. And you can see Crazy Alien being ahead with a whole farm, more than a whole farm, while Cupid Attendo goes for a lot of defense. He goes for two ricochets and a 2 3 boomer, which is a bit of over defending if you go farms, if you ask me. Because, well, you can just. One, uh, one 2 3 boomer, the 3 0 boomer can defeat a small Regal Rainbow Rush, and if he wants to go for a bigger Regal Rainbow Rush, you can just sell some farms. Round 15 is uh, is more important here because of the, because of the regrowth ceramics. Um, Crazy Alien is lacking some defense. He has the two two three boomers, but he doesn't have too much rainbow popping power. Only the three zero cannon and the two zero boomer. A bit of a lag here, I think. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of lag. A bit of lag. And Crazy Alien asks why. Yeah, he kind of spread the ceramics out too much. If he went for like four or five Rico ceramics right from the get-go of round 15, Crazy Alien might have been forced to sell a farm, but like that, no. No, no, no. Um, wow, Crazy Alien is really ahead in farms. That's, uh, that's kind of insane. That's a really huge advantage for him. And, well, <laughs> he had a really huge advantage last game as well, but he, he screwed up. So, this game is not over yet. Round 20 is usually the key round on farm battles. Also, just just saying that Kirpe Gatendo keeps his 2-3 his boomer, and uh, no, not 2-3 boomer, but 1 or, yeah, I think it's 1-3 boomer there, uh, being lazy with that. Also, both players are being lazy with their maulers. Maulers. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to send a, a, a regrow Moab right at the start of round 18. If you see your opponent like building a farm uh, very late, then you can do that. Oh, I think that's exactly what Kia Picatendo is going to do. Meh. Nah. Yeah, he sees Crazy Alien getting up his maulers. Yeah, he should defeat that. And that means that Kier Picatendo is even... Uh, uh, that Crazy Ant is even more ahead in farms. Even though that's quite a lot of regrowth ceramics. Oh my god, they might even get through. Ah, oh, no, they... No, they won't. Never mind. Never mind. On the other hand, Crazy Alien could send him up as well, because Kier Picatendo doesn't only have one Moab Mauler. Wow, Crazy Alien is going for another farm, which is kind of a bad idea. Consider, uh, if you think about the game probably ending on round 20, because well, Kippa Katendo doesn't have many farms, so he probably can't defeat a round 20 rush even with selling farms. Kippa Katendo is asking for a round 20 rush? Probably. Why build a farm then? It will never pay back in... Uh, in a half round or something. Round 20 is coming. Both player has only one mortar. This is also not enough. And Crazy Allen has this spot where uh, you can't even solo uh, camel pinks. He's going for a second mortar, but nobody's going for the round 20 rush. Even though Kiyo Pekatendo has only three farms, Crazy Allen should definitely go for a round 20 rush. I think if Fast, an all-out fast cooldown Moab rush uh, would be his best bet here. That's what I would do. Gear Picker Tendo, well... Nah, Crazy Alien can defeat a fast cooldown Moab rush. So he basically... In fact, Crazy Alien should win this game easily. Oh, well, there goes a huge rush by Gear Picker Tendo. Does he have some camus in there? I'm not sure. And he sold all his models. Wow, this is another really laggy, really laggy scene. But uh, Rico Yellows, uh, not Rico, Camel Yellows underneath it, and he sold all his models. Crazy Alien could go for a counter, counter Moab rush. And he goes for that mortar ability, so he can store the balloons and the Moabs and all that stuff, and that's exactly what he is doing. And like that, his towers should be able to defeat all those, even though it seems kind of close. But, 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 yeah, it's working. 
It is working. Crazy aliens. Oh wow, he's losing lives. How does he lose lives? How does he lose lives? And there goes the mob right to right through Kier Picatano's defense. GG. Okay, we are here in game number three between Kier Picatendo and Crazy Alien. The loser of the last match on cards, Kier Picatendo picks the map and he picks Hydro Dam. Hydro Dam, definitely the by far most awesome map in the game. Um, just, a, just, a, just a great map, nothing to say about that. And both players are starting with the mortars, so they might go for the Tyler and Karma strategy. Crazy Alien sending some blues at Kill Picatendo, cause if he has that 1-0 mortar, you can't afford your, your darkling that soon. And you link a bit to those to those grouped no not grouped to those space blues. Which is definitely worth it. Cause lives li <coughs> Excuse me, because lives matter a lot on Hydro. Lives are so damn important on Hydro, and I don't get why Kirby Attendo still can't get his Dartling. Because even if you start with the 1-0 motor, you can get your Dartling at uh, 0.42. And yes, you can see him. He lost 43 lives here, and that's just completely unnecessary. You can see Crazy Alien still having no lives lost, and. There's probably no big difference at all in eco, and uh, yes, that's just a huge disadvantage for Kiel Picotendo right now, because you lose more lives on round four and five, and even more on round six, and yeah, you always want to keep as many lives as possible in the early game, so you can uh, so you can defeat rushes better in the late game. Because if you have around 15 Regros or Remigros coming, it's a big difference if you have 30 lives or 120. That's a huge difference. Both players should probably micro their Dartlings a bit more. Can't really see what Crazy Alien is doing because Kirby Attendo records and... Well, the Dartling is always... You see, I see what Crazy Alien did with, it, with his Dartling one second ago or something. Crazy Alien layering some blues and pinks and do even more lives damage to kill Picatendo while he is still keeping no lives lost. That's pretty insane. No lives lost in Hydro on round 5. That's not bad. Even though Kill Picatendo is not testing him out that much, which he should do. Okay, now he's sending pinks. And Kill Picatendo already lost half of his lives. Now the question is, will they get? Yes, he gets his he gets his cannon for round for round eight, which is definitely a good thing to do. To do, because if he's, your opponent sends constant blacks as Kibekatendo does, then you lose some lives, like Crazy Alien does at the moment. If you want to place your cannon down, so you want to do it as early as possible to lose the least amount of lives possible. But I think Kirpikatendo's cannon is still on first, so he has to lose some more lives with putting it on close. Okay, it's already 3-0, while Quasi Alien should get it up on round 8. But still, Kirpikatendo, 58 lives, 58 lives, that's really not much. He will probably leak a bit more in round 8 if Crazy Alien rushes fast. And this cannon is on first, he has to put that cannon on close. Will there be a round 8 rush by any player? Regal yellows, regal blacks? What? No round 8 rush by Crazy Alien? No round 8 rush by Crazy Alien? Oh, that's definitely not good. He should have said what I personally, personally always do in round 8. I send constant blacks. What was that? Well, doesn't matter. I send constant blacks from round 6 to 8, and then round 8, I directly start sending regro yellows. Regro yellows, uh, then some regro blacks, and then normal yellows. That doesn't have... Oh, it's not that slow. He doesn't play many quick battles. If he, if he did, he would know what slow really is. <laughs> 
Well, maybe they sped it up, but uh, that's not slow-mo for me. So I go for that rush and it always costs your opponent about 50 lives. It's basically not possible to survive that uh, rush, no lives lost. And yeah, it doesn't hurt your eco that much, so I really like it. Round 12 and 13 is coming up. Both should get their cannon attraction for their mortar soon and their rainbow rush defense. Yes, there goes the camera detection by both players. Crazy Alien is being a bit lazy with his defense. Uh, this is probably because he wants to afford a laser cannon by round 15. Because by round 15, ceramics, ceramics are coming up. And that's a kind of the weakness of this strategy. The biggest weakness of this strategy are the spaced ceramics uh, and maybe the grouped ceramics on round 15 and 18, and a laser cannon just helps tremendously with that. But he's getting the, his ricochet up. Will Kiel Picatendo test him out a bit, so he has to get the second cannon up? Ah, uh, doesn't seem so. Crazy Ellen even sending some, some eco balloons, which is something you should never do. She should never do between round 13 and 15 on Hydro. Just no, no, unless you have 1000 eco or something. Because uh, that's the part where you really need every single, uh, every single money. Both are spacing out with their doublings a little bit. Um, yes, that's that's the thing. Because laser cannon is hard to afford. Uh, their defense is not enough for regress ceramics. I'm pretty sure if someone goes for a massive regress ceramic rush, he'll probably win this. Now uh, there goes some ceramics by Kia Picatendo. But again, he stops sending ceramics. He's like two regal ceramics, that's not a big problem. But if, and now two again, that's not a big problem again. But if he sends like uh, four or five or six or even more regal ceramics at once, then it gets a problem. But if you space them out so much, then it's not really effective. Um, Crazy Alien on the other hand doesn't send any ceramics. I don't really get why, because Kilpa Contendo can't defend them, especially after he sent that rush. But I guess that's too late now as well. Uh, the next dangerous round on Hydra is round 18. Group Ceramics, also maybe a Moab. Crazy Alien is getting three, three zero zero cannons up. Uh, which I personally don't understand, because I, I see that for many people, they're getting like billions of zero zero cannons, but then they can't afford the mortars. <laughs> and that's just a bit pointless if you ask me. Oh, 850 eco by Crazy Alien, that's a lot. And 700 by Kirby Gotendo, that's okay as well. But you have to see Crazy Alien went eco uh, on the middle rounds. Uh, so his eco doesn't worth as much as, uh, as it would if he got it on round uh, on round 13 both players seem to be set for round 18 they seem to be because they both probably have some money saved up oh crazy alien going for three moab mortars that's so much i don't think you need that especially if you have those dartlings oh and there goes the rush by kidback here Picatendo, group ceramics again, he sold his models for that rush, but Crazy Alien going for the 4-2 cannon, will that be enough? I honestly doubt it. I think Kier Picatendo should win with this one, and Crazy Alien is losing lives, 94, 92. He says, well, oh, I think he didn't, oh, I think he defeated the rush. He defeated the rush. Good job by Crazy Alien. Wow, how did he defeat that rush? Usually, even a laser cannon and a 4 to cannon isn't enough against a massive group ceramic rush, and that was quite a big one. And now there goes the Moab by Crazy Alien against Kirby and yes, that's the game. I think that's GG. There is basically nothing... What are they doing? Oh, a laser cannon by Kirby why not? <laughs> laser cannons are cool. Oh, that wasn't even a... Oh, that was almost close. But that's the game. GG. See you in the next game.
We are here in game number four, and the loser, who was uh, Kiel Picatendo, picks the map, and he picks Mondrian, another new map. And this map is actually kind of weird, because the balloons are going from the from the from the upper side to the upper side again. Uh, the AI balloons and the player sand balloons going from the um, from below, and they take that take that square and then they go to the bottom again. So it is kinda hard to make a strategy for this map. I personally I hate this map. <laughs> I hate this map. There are no good tower spots for any tower which is what I hate about this map. That's really it's horrible for tax because Ring of Fire it's just half of the popping power is wasted. It's not good for cannons, mortars, it's not good, no, it's it's good not for boomers, no, for nothing, it's just, just no, I hate it. <laughs> you can see different strategies from both players here, Crazy Alien going for a 3-0 attack shooter uh, in an interesting spot where it can only hit the player sand balloons, and a 0-0 cannon where it can hit the player sand and computer balloons. And Kyopika Tendo is going for a ninja. A ninja to support his to support his 3-0 cannon, because it cannot solo pinks on this map. Um, yeah, ninjas in early game, that's kind of a kind of a trend right now. Many players like to use ninjas in early game. Personally, I'm not sure about that. I mean, you can use it for black popping power, but. I think the power of the ninja is his ability, his ability for the rushes. And that's where you should use it and not exactly in those early rounds. I think attack shooter, where Crazy Alien has it, would probably be a better idea. Also Crazy Alien is struggling a bit to the computer balloons, but he should be fine. And wow, there goes another cannon by Crazy Alien, he's using quite a low what? He just... I think he sold the... Th blah. The 2-0 cannon for a 3-0 cannon in another spot? A bit different spot, but I don't really understand that. And there goes the Black Rush by Kier Picatendo. But this texture spot by Crazy Allen is just perfect against Blacks. Uh, they won't get through whatsoever. And Kirpikatendo is going for a second ninja! Yeah, more ninja power! <laughs> Ninjas are just too OP. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, you can use them. On round 8, Crazy Alien should definitely get some more black popping power, maybe another tag uh, just underneath it, or maybe even better in the middle. I would get another tag in the middle. Kirpikatendo sh should be Fine for round eight, not exactly sure. He should probably upgrade his ninjas a bit. Also, Crazy Alien has to watch out for round ten there because that's where natural uh, blacks are come out. Oh, 643 because that's not bad for round eight. If you have more than 600 uh, economy on round eight, then that's really good. Uh, 555, I will. Uh, 54. Uh, that's not that good. Especially, I don't understand this, if you have 554 eco, what did you do? You send a red to have 555, of course. You always want beautiful numbers as your eco. I always stop at uh, 555 or 666, especially that's funny, or 777, something like that. Around 10 regrow lads are coming up for uh, this matter, Kyopika Tendo gets his mortar up and Crazy Alien does the same. So both players are going mortars. That's interesting because while Kirby Catendo has some additional camo popping power, with oh he goes for the birdie stuff for the natural blacks. Oh that's interesting. And it works. It works. You leak a bit but that doesn't matter. But he doesn't have additional camo popping power so he has to only rely on this on this mortar for camo popping power. Which is just not enough to solo camo pings and now he sold that Q 
He sold both tax shooters. He sold the tax shooter that he just built there and built a ring of fire in the middle. Oh, what a waste of money. Uh, so he should be set against an RROD. Oh, and Crazy Alien has a ninja as well. He has a ninja as well for additional camo popping power, so those spaced camo pinks won't do anything. Here Picatendo gets his Ring of Fire up as well. Not sure, not sure why he why he chooses this spot for it, but I guess it's just just as good as the other spot. Even though it doesn't hit the it only hits the the AI balloons on one path and on two, but I guess that. That doesn't matter too much. Run 15, we go to Ramex. Ah, both should be set. Both should be set, I think. Keeping a tender seems like he tries. Does he try? Doesn't he? Oh, again, he sends those two recross ceramics. And, I mean, if you go for a recross ceramic rush, you should go for a bit more, because <laughs> every teammate can. Uh, I uh, can defeat two Redra Ceramics, that's... Yeah, you don't want to send too many small rushes. That is just kind of OP. Yeah, ninjas OP. <laughs> of course ninjas are OP. Most OP tower in the game, obviously. So that's like a... kind of low period in this game, until round 18, where the next rush can come. Maybe group ceramic rush by Kier Picatendo. Kier Picatendo showed that he really likes to rush with uh, with group ceramics. I have to remember that when I play him. <laughs> it's always good to know your opponents. You always have to know your opponents. Actually, I lost uh, to Kier Picatendo in King of the Hill. He was the prince, not for long, but uh, but he was the prince because he beat me uh, three to one. Yeah, yeah, kind of sad for me, right? But uh, he's a really good player. Uh, he definitely knows what he's doing, and so I'm not not upset about this. <laughs> I'm also I'm in front of him again now, so everything is fine. Round 18, no regrow ceramics by Kill Picatendo and not by Crazy Alien. And Crazy Alien going eco again. I think Crazy Alien goes eco at weird times in the game. Because uh, round 20, you always want to have as much money as possible of, uh, on round 20, not as much eco as possible. You get eco for money. And you don't get eco just to get eco. If you maybe know what I mean. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, Kirby Gatendo probably has about yeah, 700, 800. Uh, how, how can Crazy Alien ask for 866? Uh, ah, that's a good guess. That was a good guess. Also, both players got their balloon jitsu for round. Well, I don't know for which round. I don't get why I should get a balloon jitsu. It's it's really it's really expensive and it doesn't have much popping power. It can send ceramics back to the if you have, if it is four two, which I think it can send ceramics back to the entrance. But well, if you get a huge rush, that that won't help you much. <laughs> you need abilities then. You need the ninja ability and the blade master ability, and you don't need this blue jitsu. Sometimes it can help against the computer ceramics or something like that, but for me it's kind of waste. And I'm pretty sure we will see around 20 rushes here, or will we? Any player rush? No rush? No rush? No rush? No rush? No, there's no rush. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. Uh, round 20, well, probably, I don't think Kiel Picatendo could defend a round 20 rush, maybe, if he is fast at selling and rebuying Maelstrom. But Crazy Alan is preparing a lot for this Maelstrom stuff, but I'm not sure if he has the money to buy a lot of Maelstroms now, because he is getting five more Maulers. He's getting so many Maulers. Also, you can see that's a problem with Moabs on this map. 
because I mean you build a Moab defense for your opponent sent Moabs, but then the Moabs from the computer will probably screw you over unless you uh, build Moabs there too, which won't help you that much against the player sent balloon. So it is way more expensive to get a good defense up here. Also round 22, no rush so far. So maybe this game will, will go late. Uh, Kyo Picatendo is ahead in life, so if this gay game magically goes to round 38, which I wouldn't consider possible, uh, because this is Mondrian and they both has uh, both have ninjas and no aces, uh, this game is never gonna go to round 38. But Crazy Alien seems to go eco and Kirby Katendo a little tiny bit of eco as well, so they are planning for late game, I think. Um, well, I think if they send like... They should probably send um, a BFB rush, but... Uh, but not regrow, not regrow, because the sheer mass, the sheer mass of the of the balloons that come out, um, will be the problem. And you have to sell and rebuild mass from so many times, and it's just you can't do it infinite amount of times. And I think uh, I think personally this would work now. Also, you have a really small time to pop all those BFBs and. Yeah. Crazy Allen's having a lot more eco though. That is kinda so I would say he's ahead in this game even though Kirpika Tendo is ahead in lives. But to be honest, that doesn't really matter. Because if you don't go to 38 anyways, then why should lives matter? Kirpika Tendo preparing for those maelstroms, I think with those Zero zero tax shooters. <laughs> I think you have enough of them, Kyo. <laughs> I really think. Right there, saying what, what, <laughs> what, what? He doesn't understand. Yeah, I'm really waiting for a rush. You can also send. So my God, so that's of course an option. You can even go for mortar exploits if you want. Because with ceramics and a lot of other ceramics balloons in it, it's unlikely that the ninja will will deal with those ceramics. Yeah, many options, but I think going eco is not necessary at this point. Because well, it pays back two minutes and thirty seconds later, and I don't think that this game will last until thirty minutes. I think it will end earlier. Oh, kind of nothing to talk about now. <laughs> uh, that's always a problem with late game, but at least this game is fast. Wow, now that I'm saying it, now that I'm saying, oh, at least that game is fast, uh, it seems like we have a bit of slow-mo. <laughs> of course, of course. Oh, and they're actually struggling a little bit, especially here to those computer moabs he activates the ninja ability so yeah he should be fine both players stopped eco so they okay no player did not stop eco uh, so maybe they're preparing for a rush in theory it should be crazy alien who's rushing cuz um cuz he's be he's behind in lives but uh, I think it doesn't really matter. Kyopi Katendo can rush too, because I think rushing is easier than defending uh, at this point <laughs> with this crappy towers. If you have no late game towers, it is so hard. And oh my god, Kyopi Katendo is leaking here. He gets this Maelstrom. Oh, he doesn't really, really activate it. Oh, that was close. That was really, really close. He lost some lives there, but he survived and he still had in lives. He still had in lives by 10 lives. Um, yeah, lucky for him, lucky for him. My god, this is so slow at the moment. 
Cubic Attendo defend those computer regrow rainbows with Lake Maelstrom. Which is probably a good thing to do. Oh, I have something to talk about. I have a topic. Yay! Uh, uh, as you might know, uh, the first episode I commented, commented was also with Crazy Alien against uh, Vriden. He told me that you pronounce it Vriden, Vriden, something like that. And not Ryden. Yeah. So watch out for that. <laughs> and you saw him spying there in the game on Temple. And many of you asked me about that, and yes indeed, Crazy Alien got a punishment for that. He, the two badges he got against Raiden were removed, because, well, he got it by, by spying, kind of. And, yeah, he doesn't have those two badges. But he's not, uh, he's not banned from King of the Hill or something, he can still play battles, as you can see here. Um, yes. <coughs> But the problem with spying is you can't really control it. Um, you can't see if a player spies, and so we kind of have to trust you to be uh, to be honest there and uh, to play fair. Um, I think that's really important that uh, you always play fair. You don't don't spy or hack or something. We had some hackers recently as well, uh, which really stinks. I really hate it when people hack, cause. Um, even if it's like something like even if it's even if it's something like a medallion's hack, uh, it's still unfair. And if people don't get this, uh, I don't understand. Uh, I really don't understand. But let's get back into the game. Round thirty, the natural BFB is coming up. I think both uh, mob assassinated it, and I'm so surprised that both are not doing anything. I know that they can stall a rush with a more ability, but yeah, you can't stall it forever, and I can't see any one of those players defeating a huge rush at the moment. Not at all. Not at all. Kipika Tendo is going for three mortars, three mortars, even though he uh, he got ninjas as well. Maybe he's preparing for the ability. Oh, there goes the rush. There goes the rush by Crazy Alien, and it's a oh my god rush. What will Kill Picker Tender do? Rely on Blade Maelstrom. He says, "Good luck. Good luck defeating that rush." Uh, I think he won't. I think he won't. The best thing he can do is stall this rush and send a counter rush. I think that's the only way what he could do, because, see, that's, oh my god, that is 4 BFBs, 16, uh, 16 Moabs, and, um, I think that's 64 Ceramics, then at least that's not only one, oh my god, but, uh, more, oh my gods, and, yeah, defeating them without Aces or Super Monkeys, uh, is just so hard. Also, you can see this big Scottish decay from Crazy Aliens on that, on that, so my god, I, I love how, how the flag decals are so big and um, on, on that, so my god. <laughs> Crazy Alien is Scottish and has his country decal. Um, yeah, I like that I also use the Germany decal because I'm German. And yes, yeah, you can see he tries to stall that rush, but uh, the so my gods are, are moving. Crazy Alien says, You got this. But I think he's joking because obviously the the my gods are half the way through and they aren't even popped into BFBs. I think what he really should try is um is stalling the so my gods and hope the crazy alien dies to the natural blooms. <laughs> because this actually looks quite a bit scary on crazy alien's side. Oh he popped the Zomai Gods into BFBs. You see, that's eight BFBs. Eight BFBs. Also, there are Moabs on the screen as well. <coughs> Sorry. Crazy Alien, on the other hand, defeat the natural Moab rush. And, and, oh, there goes the ceramics by Kirpika Tendo. He's activating the Maelstrom, but will it be enough? I feel like he will lose. I feel like he should lose to those Moabs. 
Yes, that's the game. GG! Crazy Alien wins this game and with that he also wins the series. 3 to 1. So, congrats Crazy Alien. I think you moved on onto uh, a higher place than you were before. Uh, bad information about that. Even though I updated this game, I remember that, but doesn't matter. So, hope you liked the episode and see you next time.